Hi, Dr. Arlen Hill here. Could a lack of carny nutrients be related to your health conditions? Now, the first question you're probably asking is, what are carny nutrients? Well, if you're familiar with the term carnivore or meat eater, then carny nutrients is probably going to start to make some sense to you. We think about meat eaters as eating, as having different nutrients or di exposure to different nutrients as compared to individuals who are going to be predominantly plant eaters or herbivores. Now, most of us are not on either extreme of the, of the category there. We're not carnivores and we're not herbivores. We fall in the middle. We're pretty much omnivores. However, when we look at our diet, there are some very important nutrients that come from meat and we call these carny nutrients. Now, one thing to understand about carny nutrients, and this varies just a little bit when you look at the medical literature, with some experts suggesting that carny nutrients solely come from meat sources or that with others expressing that carny nutrients come predominantly from meat sources. The bottom line is, is that if you're not consuming these carny nutrients, you're probably not getting an adequate amount of certain nutrients that are specifically found in proteins. Now, what nutrients are we typically talking about here? There's a couple we want to keep in mind. And we can break them down into two different categories. We've got the nutrients that are amino acids, and then we've got nutrients that are non-amino acids. So let me start with the amino acids. And the one that's probably easiest to correlate is going to be carnitine. Name definitely shows the correlation here. Carny nutrients, carnitine, or carnitine, exaggerating the carny on that. When we talk about carnitine, carnitine is going to be found predominantly in red meats. Um, it's found in all proteins, but the more red meat we have, the greater the amount of, of carnitine we're likely to find in that. And carnitine is pretty important. Most people really like carnitine because carnitine is what helps us take our fats from our diet and put them into the energy burning components of the cell and actually burn that fat for energy. Now, if you can be a more efficient fat burner, then you're likely to have less, uh, less accumulation of body fat overall. So carnitine is extremely important in that. That's not the only role that carnitine has. It also is beneficial in, it's a structural component to our lean muscle tissue, as well as having some positive effects on overall brain health as well. So carnitine is pretty important. Another one that falls in is a nutrient that has a similar name called carnosine. Now carnosine, not carnitine, Carnosine is actually what's considered an anti-glycation nutrient. Now what that means is, is that carnosine is going to have some antioxidant type properties and it's going to inhibit some of the negative effects that blood sugar has on various proteins throughout our body. It's very protective. So we can think about carnosine as, has, as having antioxidant, anti-inflammatory properties to it. The third one that falls into this amino acid category is going to be creatine. Now creatine most people think about creatine as being associated with working out, muscle building, bodybuilding, these types of things. And yes, while it does have very positive associations with that, one of the things that we should also consider in this is that creatine is a very important part of our body's muscle tissue. And what we know now is that individuals who have better overall muscle composition tend to have better aging characteristics as well. So if you want to age better, you should probably start looking for better muscle tissue or start trying to find ways to develop better muscle tissue. And creatine is very important in this process. The nutrients or the three additional amino acids that help build, that help build creatine are going to be pretty favorably, pretty favorably found from protein sources. So if you want to have good muscle tissue development, good anti-aging, good longevity characteristics, make sure you're getting creatine into your diet through adequate protein consumption. Now, those are the amino acid nutrients. What about the non-amino acid nutrients? So there's a couple that are important here. Some of these that I'll start off with are going to be ones you're pretty familiar with. Iron, right at the top of the list. Well, what is so unique about iron? The first thing is that iron is going to be necessary for building good red blood cells. If we want to carry oxygen around and prevent anemias and be energetic, then you got to have good iron around. However, we shouldn't just pigeonhole iron into thinking about its relationship to, to blood and to prevention of anemia. The additional roles that iron has, one of which I'll mention here that's extremely important in this day and age, is that it's important for our detoxification enzymes. 
we have these great little unique enzymes called C cytochrome P450 enzymes. And while the name of that is not so important, what is important is the fact that these enzymes help us detox. And if we want to keep our inflammation down, uh, keep our bodies healthy, prevent aging at a more rapid rate, then we have to be able to efficiently detox. The other area where iron is extremely important and much less talked about also is the role that it has in, in good neurological health. Some of the different conversions that we need to make from different types of chemicals or different types of metabolites to get to the neurochemicals we actually want to be at requires iron as a cofactor in that process. So without iron, you don't make the metabolite, you don't make the likely neurotransmitter either. The next nutrient is going to be B12. B12, another very common nutrient. Most people think about B12 as being also associated with energy. And that's for just cause also because we don't build good healthy red blood cells if we don't adequately have, have B12. So it's a very important carny nutrient as well. Yes, you can get it from other sources uh, outside of meats, but it's just not going to be very efficient. The reason additionally to good healthy red blood cells that, that B12 is so important is that it's going to help with processes known as methylation and methylation has a number of different applications from helping produce good, D, good healthy DNA, your, uh, help, helping to replicate your genes, helping to detoxify, keeping a, an inflammatory protein named homocysteine nice and low and under control and homocysteine has a lot of damaging effects so we certainly want to keep that down. B12 is very important in doing that. Now, let me go into some of the carny nutrients that are not amino acids that are less talked about. And the one that's coming right off, right to the top of the mind for me on this is going to be selenium. Now, selenium, little small micronutrient here, mineral. And we don't really hear a lot about selenium, but selenium has some very important roles in the body. The first of which is that selenium is going to be considered an antioxidant. And one of the things that selenium is very important in doing is that it helps to resynthesize some of our other antioxidants. So if we're looking at all the antioxidants and how they work together, selenium is a critical cofactor in making sure that these other antioxidants all have the horsepower that they need to keep inflammation nice and suppressed. Selenium is predominantly going to be found in skeletal muscle tissue and the reason being is that it binds up to other proteins. This is one of the carny nutrients that you can find in non-animal sources, but again, it's predominantly found in animal sources. Another one is going to be phosphorus. Phosphorus is an important carny nutrient just because simply if you look at it by weight, phosphorus is going to, be, is going to make up about 1% of our overall body weight. In addition to that, it's the second most abundant mineral. So you can see just from two, those two numbers, it's fairly important. When we start talking about the, what the utilization of phosphorus is going to be, it's going to be involved in your bones, your teeth, and your overall growth and repair processes. So it's pretty important for those mechanisms as well. But one of the things to note about this is that while you can get a small amount of this from fruits and vegetables, it's not an appreciable enough amount to really make any significant difference. So therefore, it means that you've got to be, you've got to be able to consume some of these, or you've got to be able to get that phosphorus from your, um, from your protein sources in the diet. Now, in concluding this, this conversation about carny nutrients, one of the things to keep in mind is that while plants are a very important part of our diet, and in many cases you could probably argue that they should make up the majority of our diet because of the numerous health benefits that they have, one thing I want to keep in mind or want you to keep in mind is that these carny nutrients that we find in proteins are not likely to be found in any appreciable contribution in a vegetarian diet. So if you are consuming a vegetarian diet, there are some limitations and supplementation might be necessary. And I would be amiss because as I come to conclusion and to wrap this conversation up, I did leave out that there is one additional important carny nutrient in the amino acid category that I forgot to mention, and that is taurine. And taurine is definitely one that's less talked about. One of the things that we in this society have a tendency to do is become more overactive. We tend to be more in a stress model and taurine is important because it calms the brain down. It brings down the overactivity in the brain. It's very calming to the brain. It's in what we call an inhibitory neurochemical. In addition to that, when we start thinking about the activity of the platelets. If you think about the sticky part of our blood, what if we cut ourselves, what allows our blood to, to begin to clot, those are the platelets that are doing that. 
Our platelets are very rich in taurine. And taurine is what helps drive and promote that clotting mechanism or, or prevent that mechanism from overclotting, I should say. So for individuals that don't adequately consume taurine, they actually clot too easily. So if we want to prevent some of that, taurine is great at inhibiting that process because of the action that it has on calcium. So I would be amiss if I didn't put that one in there just because of its importance. So again, guys, don't forget these carny nutrients. And if you're looking at rationale for why should I bring protein into my diet or how much protein should I be eating, keep in mind that without that adequate and consistent protein consumption, you're losing some very important nutrients that quite honestly, apart from supplementation, just really aren't found anywhere else. So I think on that point I'll end just because it stresses the importance of why these carny, carny nutrients should be a routine component in your diet. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Arland Hill.